Hey folks, I'm in Jensen Beach, Florida today at North Fork Bait and Tackle. And we're gonna go in here and meet up with the shop owner, Steve, who's a, a new canoe dealer. And uh, we're gonna rig up a, I think it's a Frontier 12 uh, with his Ultralight 403A. Let's head in. What's up, Steve? Ah, welcome, Jeff. Nice shop you got here, man. Well, thank you very much. You want to just kind of walk me through what all you got? Okay, we can do that. Uh, being the unique location we are, we, we're in an area where we have the saltwater fishing and we also have freshwater fishing. So we have both fresh saltwater bait, shrimp, we carry shrimp. And then we have freshwater, we have shiners, minnows, and all that kind of stuff. And also, we have to carry both artificials for freshwater and saltwater. So we've got a large variety, plastics, hard baits, both and then in saltwater, we've got inshore, offshore. So we nice. can cover the whole spectrum of things here. And you got a, I see you got a pursuit front and center here as you walk in. Yes, we do. That's our flagship boat right now I and mean, we've made I've even made rods to match the the boat the color of the boat to add a little something different you don't see many kayak guys with matching rods for right. the boats up there so so you're, rod, you're a rod builder as well yes we do custom rods here so very cool so show me the uh, the boat we're gonna and yep here is the boat that we're gonna put the motor on okay scoop up this is a Frontier 12 with, in the new Thunderstorm color. It looks like you've already started uh, doing a little bit there. You got some of the sliding foot pegs on there. Yep, the foot sliding and then the mount for the, which I believe is going to be the control panel over there on the yep, side. Yeah, you got so. your Torquedo, your uh, Yak Attack Torquedo throttle mount. Yep. Very cool. So we got a little bit of a head start here uh, with the, the, the Selec design. Uh, recreational style foot brace and then we'll have to run our our tubes so nice all right well let's jump in and get it going okay so when steve you you know we talked about what you wanted this boat to be a priority for you is the power pole yeah we got to have power pole so i said got to talk with with trey an innovative sportsman and he did and he's ordered this is the new, newly redesigned rugged inline mount. So we're going to put this on. That's the production model right here. That's yep. the standard one that's now. That's the first one. And where's the, the brackets um, to, to clamp it onto the back? So in order to get it back on here, what we need is this right here. So we'll start with that, which gives us our, our our four bolt pattern back here to mount the rugged inline mount and then we're going to attack the run in the tubes for the the foot control steering so we got these little p clips and we've been trying to figure out the best way to attach them we actually tried to see if we can get them in that that screw for the track but these these little p clips aren't quite long enough We'll figure it out. We went to the hardware store and bought bought some other ones, and they didn't quite fit. But we the idea is that we want this tubing run along here, going all the way up to somewhere right in here, and it'll attach to the sliding foot pegs, which this is um, sea like design, you know, recreational style foot braces, which you know Steve can stick his heel up there and be able to have foot control steering um, yeah so that's what we're doing oh look I didn't even take any time at all look you already got that on awesome is that tight no and it's not it's not tightened down yet right. but it's on there yep all right that easy that easy <laughs> cool all right so the layout's gonna be here we're gonna put a small clip right here then another one of these clips right here we're gonna tuck it nice and tight behind the track so that way it stays secure 
and they were running right down parallel with the rail all the way down to the track and it's going to hook up right there so there will be a set of three it's all going to be nice and neat and snag free so while they're working on that i'm going to go ahead and put our power pole base on the uh the rugged inline now that way when we're ready for to put this on the bracket, the, the new canoe adapter plate, uh, the, at least that much is ready to go. So you always got to film the mistakes to hope, hopefully help somebody else avoid it. Um, hey, I just put the mount on the side that's supposed to be down on the back of the kayak. It should have gone here, so I did that wrong. All right, so I'm going to take these off. And this is the surface that goes down back there, and then the power pole mount actually goes here. So let me get that right. Whoops. All right, so I've been giving feedback along the way to, to Trey Leach and Innovative Sportsman, and at one point he actually figures out with the, the text photos I've been sending him that, um, all right, I finally figured out what's, what's wrong with the setup. He said that we, when we started with this, we have it backwards. So this is okay. This part actually needs to be here. So we're gonna pull this out, we're gonna reverse these, and we're gonna get the four bolt pattern on the inside and not on the back. Once we do that, I think this is gonna, we won't have to have this spacer in there and we'll have it on the inside of the boat, then we'll be good. Make sense? All right, we're learning. While the guys are finishing up the mount, I finished up the tubing here, and the way I did it was uh, I did the screws first, which is enough so you get a little wiggle room, and then you take your piece here, mount nice and flush, and then you trim just a little piece off, like you're trimming your fingernail. That's the best reference I got. But the trick is, don't take them out all the way the screws out all the way because you won't be able to get them in there with that with that piece there because it'll bind up and you end up stripping and you'll do more harm but trick you, you put the tube on you take a flathead screwdriver a slight tweak and you insert it sometimes you'll feel like a little like a pop that's it just setting in there nice and tight and sometimes they'll come out but honestly nice and secure so we ran the the tubing along here and we have the uh, little fair lead already in place we're just utilizing that as it exists I put this this is a 1 8 uh, p-clip actually this is the 1 8 p-clip so I'm putting that on here and I like it to be about the width, you know, where, where the tubing ends is about the width of the tips of the steering triangle back here, um, but lined up there. So all I'm doing is doing a little pilot hole. You can come in close. I'll show you this. I'm going to drill that right there. And that's just enough that I can snug this down and that one p-clip will cinch down right there from the Phillips head screwdriver <laughs> and then I'll just trim this at the end but you know this 1 8 size p-clip is uh, is is grabby. It's. I think we used a little bit larger size um, in the right next to the track, but this one is going to be tight. Well done. Okay. Let's 
should not slide out. Yep, that's secure. That's not coming out. So I'll trim that, and, um, and it'll be ready to run run the cable through there. So and then connect, and we'll have the, the steering. I'll go ahead and do the other side, and we'll keep it moving. So I'm I'm gonna go ahead and put this one eighth P clip here, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna put, you know, put it in there with this stainless steel screw. Um, something I wanted to show you, um, just to make sure that they don't pull out, is the same thing we do when we run them through the hull. We heat this, and you tamp it. I've already done it on this one, and then you can use the screw to to flare it out, which I've already I've already done all that with this one. So I'm gonna put it on there. Drill my pilot hole. about like that and it's just important that the ones on the on the end are tight you know we didn't have them these are these are a little bit loose you can see these are kind of sliding through there uh, they're the larger size one I think if you went with the eighth for all of them in this 3 16th tubing you know it's it's grabby you know it's it's actually the the t the p clip is smaller than it should be for this size tubing but that's okay cuz that means that it will be secure by the time i'm done <clears throat> and if something does catch the tubing it's not going to to pull through this tubing or this, uh, the tubing came from Innovative Sportsman. The P-clip I picked up at a, a paddle shop somewhere. I think it's, I think that the P-clips, um, ultimately that was a um, Select Design product. I'll have to look up that product number from Select Design, but you can see that's secure. All right, so we're done with the tubing. You can see it runs all the way back up here through that fair lead that already existed and then to the back of the boat just like that so we're ready for the cables so we're not actually using the cable because i went out to my truck and i said steve i think i got some something that'll make it a little bit smoother and that is instead of the cable which uh, Trey does give you all the, the crimps and everything you need to, to do that, um, but I have the, the Spectra. So I like the Spectra because it's smoother and it just, it just glides through the tubing a lot easier and you can adjust it. So I've done a little noose knot here to attach it and if, if I need to lengthen it or shorten it, I can, I can retie this knot as opposed to if you're using the cable, once you do these little these little crimps and you and you really use the vice grips and, and crimp it, I hope you got it right the first time because there's no adjusting it afterwards. I know that that um, the trade innovative sportsman is is in the process of he's waiting to get a big spool of the spectra. So you'll be able to get that from him at some point. I think he had to order like 3,000 feet or something ridiculous as a minimum, but it's coming. Spectra is the better stuff. Um, one thing that I will point out as you as you have the tracks here, um, and and I had uh, I'll go ahead and put this back on and show you what I'm what I'm talking about. You want your seat position and your your sliding foot pegs as far forward as possible. And now as you put this in, if you push. The right one forward all the way, it's going to turn to the left. And but if you look right in here, you can see the front of this track hits right up here. Okay, that limits how far forward you can come. So to fix that, we're going to fix this. So. 
so in, in cutting that length off, it allows your range of, of rotation of your foot to come a little further forward and allows the seating to come further forward. And that brings your weight instead of at the, you know, back here, it brings it here, pushes your nose down, and you fly faster. All right, we are done with our foot control steering here. This is nice and smooth. We got the tubes running. Let's take a look at that range of rotation of that, the motor. We got close to 180 degrees of, of rotation there. Almost. It's going to be a very agile bag here. So the next thing that we're doing is we're, we're installing the reverse lock and you're working on the motor lift. So we got the cleat there. We've taken everything out of the tracks. We've taken the seat T-bolts out um, and we're coming in the back because we already have these um, the tracks up here. We don't want to mess with that. They're good. We've put that in and, uh, and I have the so on one side this is the this is going to be your motor lift. So you got this really nice cord here. You're going to run that go ahead up through there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So one side is uh, reverse lock, the other one is motor lift. And then we can just put it all back together and look at the whole thing. But it's coming along nicely. All right, we got it rigged up. We are ready. And tomorrow we're heading out. We're going to do do a little largemouth fishing here locally? We are, well, semi-locally. It's a short drive, but we're going to go and fish what they call Jurassic Lake. It, it's the home of the big girls. Nice. So well, give us an overview how, it, how it's all set up and what, what it looks like steering. We've got foot control steering, which is, I, I think, a great asset for what I want because in that way I can battle fish and still move my motor. We've got the throttle right here. You got an extra length in there, didn't you? Yep, I put a little extra one so it's a little higher. Nice. And I just do it on the right side because I leave this side as open for fish. I right. don't like anything on this side. I want no excuses. Okay. Uh, we got battery back here. It's going to be perfect. It's protected from the sun a little bit. And here's the main reason this whole thing we did for is I've got my power pole. The micro anchor, which I would not have a, have a kayak without it. I love it. All so right. now I've got the great motor, I've got the power pull. I mean, what more could a man want other than maybe an eight pounder? Well, let's work on that tomorrow. There we go. <laughs> cool. Good looking rig, man. I, I love it. Uh, thank you very much. Yep. You did a, great. All right, we're just getting on the water, but what I wanted to show off here as we're we're getting ready to go uh, I've set up my Torquedo demo day here uh, and I'll be doing a lot of these throughout the year at different BASS and KBF events and Slay Nation a lot of different tournaments I'm going to show up uh, and bring four different motorized kayaks uh, for now it's going to be we have the Pursuit the Attack Wilderness Attack 140, the Bonafide SS-127, and the Hobie Pro Angler 14. So if you see this tent here and you're pre-fishing for a tournament, uh, that means that I'm somewhere nearby giving test drives. So. But speaking of test drive, we're getting ready to see what we get out of the Frontier 12 and the 403. Yeah. Now get your, is your magnet, your kill switch attached to your life jacket? That is important. Wow, that's got some power. Let me see your range of rotation. Just, just spin in circles.
Oh yeah. All right. Did you okay. get anything while uh, while I was packing up everything, or? I had one little alligator want to take a look at it, but I got it out of the way. So All right. That was about it. That's not what we're here for, huh? No, that's not what we're here for. All right. So we're making a good long run. I think you said. Yep. I see him. <laughs> I see that little nose sticking up. Yep. On to that side, they're just fine. So we've moved about two, two and a half miles down lake, and uh, I'm seeing shallow activity. I don't know whether these are fish on a bed or not, but let's take a look. Let's see if I can. Zoom in. You can see that water disturbance. There. Someone's moving out there. Just on the other side of those reeds. There was big movement in this opening here. Right up in there. A little bit of movement. What I saw before, there, there's definitely stuff going on. You know, I, I'm seeing a lot of small stuff, small movements, which maybe they're panfish trying to move in on a bed to eat eggs, or I don't know. But I did see one big swirl, so I think that might be a bet. We'll go and I got a little Z Man uh, punch craw. Texas rig on a, it's just a, I think a three quarter ounce tungsten bullet weight. I'm gonna set that in there. See if that pegged punch craw will get in there. Yeah, there's still big movement. Let's head over there. Uh, just lost a big, big, big. Dang it. Oh, that was a good fish. Uh, pulled into an area where I saw some motion, but more than anything, it just it's sporadic clumps of this. This floating, I don't even know what you call it, cabbage or, I don't know what it is. Dang, that was a good fish. Mm, just moving along the grass edge, slowly picking it apart with the chatterbait. Missed that one big. Mm. I'll catch them in this range. Nice fish. That's chunky. You've been caught before recently. You can see a healed hole right there.
this is how I got the last good one lining up with the bank and just right along the edge there we go Thanks for playing. Steve, I didn't feel like this is a a lane that's formed here. It's a little bit deeper. And that's, you know, casting along the, that kind of shoreline is how I got that, got a couple of them that way. I'd like to come right up to the bank. Turn. Make sure the wind isn't pushing me off of it. If it is, I like a draw stroke just to pull me in and then I get the angle right. And if I swing wide, I can move my rod tip in or out depending on, you know, how, how much I want to tuck it up underneath that vegetation. Really, the closer you can get it, the better off you are. But I'm drifting off, and this is where that, that draw stroke brings you right back into it. Get you ready for the next cast. Steve, I'm pretty sure that there's a bird back there that's got a kazoo caught in its throat. <laughs> Do you hear the bird I'm talking about? It's like it found it floating there and said, that looks like food and then <laughs> he stuck with it. Oh! That's a good one. Go. That is moving a lot of water. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a big for the day. What a pretty fish. Yeah. You like the jackhammer? <laughs> That's a good one. Beauty. All right. Nice 19 and a half inch, three pound, 10 ounce Florida largemouth. Looks like it's a uh, post spawn. Got got kind of flabby and spawned out. We'll go ahead and get this one back in there. 
Loving the jackhammer. Shallow, just laying up on top of this stuff, maybe six inches of water until the hydrilla, and then you just sitting there, sitting there waiting to eat. Thank you. See you later. You can go now. Do you not know that you can go yet? He's breathing. All right, we are heading back in. You like your setup, man? Oh, I love it. I've got so many. I've got so many different things I can do with this. I'm thinking now. So you made a lot of use of your the power pole there. I did. And the motor got you to, we saw a good bit of the lake. Yep, just like this afternoon when I come back on, we had a strong south wind. Right. And if I would have, there ain't no way I was battling that mile and a half. Right. It, it, made, it was like, oh, this is great. Very cool. Well, if folks want to come by and test drive it, is that a possibility? It is. Nice. I'll go ahead and put the uh, the web address up there and the address. And uh, if you wanted to swing by North Fork Bait and Tackle in Jensen Beach, Florida, you'll be able to do a test drive. Signing out. See ya.